Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and another quick welding project here today. Didn't think I was going to make a YouTube video on this, so I already got started a little bit on it, but it seems to be getting more and more interesting, so what the heck, we'll go ahead and put it out there as a video. So the project on this one, it, this is where the spare tire mounts on this trailer, and it's currently mounted low enough. There's a little cover down here. I'll show you a better shot of that here in a minute. So here's a quick shot of this electrical cabinet on here. Right now I've got that tire in place so I can lift it up. I can just get that latch mechanism to engage on there the way that it's supposed to. With the tire down a little bit lower, it would only come up to about right here and just weren't able to engage that lock mechanism to hold the cabinet open. Now that we've got it where we want to, should be able to use this cabinet the way that it was originally designed to be used. So we need to lift the tire up about three inches to get it where it needs to be. So right now I've got the tire in position. The only thing that was on here was just a little tab. It holds this little cover plate in place so that you can actually lock the tire on. So we'll put that little tab back on. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a new 3 8 piece of plate, drill this bolt hole circle on here, and weld the new plate in place three inches up. Because right now by lifting it up right here, I don't have enough room to put the bolts in. I could maybe get two down here in the bottom but feels like a lot of a lot of tire up top. So we're gonna weld the new plate on, get it raised up to three inches. Right now I've got it blocked up in place. Just have a, a C-clamp in behind holding these pieces of wood in place to allow me to get that set in the right place. Figure out where I wanna orient the bolt hole circle. We've got it set up so that I'm gonna drill half of that bolt hole circle and put four holes in there. With these holes, it's an eight hole circle, 45 degrees. I've just got it oriented. We'll go 22 and a half degrees to get that up. I'll show you a little more on that when we get over to the mill and start to drill it. But that's the project. We're going to get this thing mounted three inches up so we can get this cabinet to open up on here. Hey, as always, I appreciate you coming and finding the channel and watching these videos. Shout out to all my subscribers and helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there and watch some of the other videos on the channel and see if this is something you'd like to subscribe to. Machining, welding, knife making, just everything else going on here in the Blades to Be Shop. And if you like this video, hey, drop a like on here, drop a comment. Always appreciate hearing from you and ideas and suggestions. All right, let's go ahead and get over to the mill where we got the plate set up and talk about drilling this bolt hole circle. Let's go. Well, here's a quick sketch of what we've got going on. So I've got a piece of 12 by 12, 3 8 plate that I'm starting with. The piece is actually, it's like I say, 12 inches by 12 inches. I'll probably end up taking a torch and we'll cut that to shape a little bit after. But what I do know right now, I've you saw I've got the tire out there. I've got it propped up on some board. So I was able to get a good measurement on where I need to be. So right now I'm measuring off of the bottom of the existing piece of plate and measured up to where I need this bolt hole circle to go through to hold it at the height that I currently have it. So I need from the bottom edge of that existing plate, that's what I'll use as my guide to clamp it and weld it in place. Need nine and a quarter inches. So it's a 6.5 inch bolt hole circle. So take three and a quarter inches off of that. And I need to be six inches from the edge of this plate up to the center of that bolt hole circle. We'll check out the plate where I've got that lined up. So I'm six inches up from the bottom. I gave myself just a hair extra to make sure that we're good, make sure we have some clearance. And then I just centered that up on the plate for right now. Like I say, we'll take and cut this plate a little bit to some dimension and cut some of the excess off of it here after we get it all lined up and get it drilled. And again, the way I've got it oriented, I'm just going to go right between two holes is where I want that centered up on my plate. So since it's an eight hole circle, it's 90 degrees between the, every other hole. So it's 45 degrees to this center hole, which means to go between two holes, 22 and a half degrees. All right, not every bolt circle is gonna be as easy to figure out the angles on that. So here's the app that I use. Uh, it's out there, you can get it in the app store or at cncdirt.com. I'm not sponsored by these guys, but I do get asked a lot what app I tend to use for my speeds, my feeds, everything. So here's just a quick shot of what that bolt hole circle would look like in the app. You get on here, you click on bolt hole circle, you get over to the bolt hole circle page, put in the diameter where you want your X and Y, zero, and then I already put in that I want 22.5 degrees to my first hole. I've got eight holes and you can see that that lays it out where it's going to split our top holes and put it where we want. Now, every milling machine, and you'll see this when we get over, you have to understand where your zero is and maybe it's not going to be 22 and a half. You might have to punch in a different number, which we're going to do here in a moment. Either way, you're going to be able to figure out what angle, where you want to start from. And this is nice. If you don't have a DRO that does bolt hole circles, this actually spits out all your XY coordinates on where you need to be. So even if you had a manual machine without having a DRO at all, you would still be able to get in there and do a bolt hole circle just by moving yourself to all these coordinates, uh, just by counting out numbers on the dial. So great app. If you're interested, if you need something, want to be able to visualize. And again, I also use this for turning speeds, milling speeds and feeds, drilling speeds and feeds, the drill chart on here, just a great app for the money if you're looking for something. 
All right, let's go back in here to the project. So when we set up the bolt hole circle on the mill, we want our starting point to be 22 and a half degrees so that that way we'll get just these four holes on that half of the bolt hole circle. And that's what we're gonna use to put the lug nuts and everything back in. So that's the plan. We've got the plate in here. Let's go ahead and get a zeroed in on our mark and then we'll get our bolt hole circle plugged in and we'll get in here and punch these four holes. Let's go. All right, so I've got my center punch mark on there. Just went six. I went about an extra sixteenth of an inch just to make sure we're not coming up short on that lid. So six, about a sixteenth of an inch. Just centered it up on the 12 inch plate here. So we're six inches. This is not critical within a couple thousandths of an inch. So tape measure is good. I am just gonna put in my center wiggler here and we're gonna go over there and we're gonna just use the wiggler to make sure we're lined up on that point. And then that's where I will zero out my DRO. And that is gonna be the center of our bolt hole circle and we'll put our four holes up in here. I always like to just kind of mark out my holes a little bit just to make sure I don't get lost in something and help me find out if there's an error along the way. So if I were to go up here three and a quarter, yeah, three and a quarter inches. And sort of draw that as our circle. So we're gonna go 22 and a half degrees, so I should end up with a hole somewhere about there. Somewhere about there, somewhere about there, and somewhere about there. That should be more or less where my holes are gonna end up. And I do just wanna check my mill and make sure that I've got this plate bolted on here in a place where I can get access to all of those. But that's roughly where they should come out as we're punching this in. So that'll just, again, help make sure that we're lined up by having a, some Sharpie marks on there to work too. So I'm pretty close with where I had that clamp sticking out the back, but I'm still able to get past my center point on there, so we are gonna be good. All right, so I've got that spinning on center. I've got that lined up over my center punch mark on there. So again, we're within 10 or 15 thou, that's close enough. So I'm gonna go ahead on my DRO now. Let's take a look at how we're gonna set up this bolt hole circle. All right, so first off for the DRO, I wanna set my X and Y to zero. So we've got those zeroed out on there. I'm gonna go in here to function. And next one over is bolt hole circle. So I wanna enter that. I want my bolt hole circle center to be my zero, zero, X and Y. So we're starting from where I just zeroed it. So we'll leave those. Bolt hole circle diameter. So this is 6.5 inches. All right, so 6.5 inches, enter. Going with eight holes. And this is that bolt hole circle starting angle. I want 22.5 degrees. Enter, and we're gonna hit go. So now I'm pretty sure my 22.5 We'll, we'll make sure we know where I am off of the, the 90 here. I can't remember if I want 22.5 or if I need to add 90 to that for this mill. We'll find out here in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and now just gonna wind until we get to zero on both of these axes. And that's where we're gonna wanna put in that first hole. But first, let me change this out. I'm gonna put in a center drill and then uh, we'll go ahead and actually center drill and mark these holes as we're working our way around here. All right, so we're gonna go to number one. So 22 and a half degrees is not going to take me the right direction. That's going to put me down in the... All right, so right now, 22 and a half degrees is not taking me up to that hole. 22 and a half degrees is trying to take me down to start my first hole down here. So again, I couldn't remember where zero was on here. So zero is right at this point right here. So that's my zero degree on this particular mill. So 22 and a half degrees is going to put me down here. So I know I want to be 22 and a half degrees up. So instead, I'm just gonna take 360. I'm gonna subtract 22.5 degrees. We're gonna go reset our bolt hole circle and that's gonna put me in right there. So 360 degrees minus 22.5 is 337 and a half. Let's go readjust our bolt hole circle. All right, so we're gonna go in here to our function. Then function once more to get back to the bolt hole circle. 6.5 diameter still, eight holes. 22.5, but instead of that, we're gonna go with 337.5. And now we're gonna go. Now we're winding the right direction. There we go. Now I usually start up the mill, let it shake out a little bit, and then readjust those finally. 
All right, so we've got that locked in on hole number one. Let's see how that's looking on our plate. And that's coming down pretty much where we have our Sharpie mark on there. So let's go ahead and get that drilled and marked, and then we'll work our way around. All right, so we got hole number one complete. Now we just go on to hit our next, go on to hole number two, and the holes actually go around here counterclockwise. So that's gonna have me come straight down on the, uh, the Y axis, which is not what I want to do. So we're not actually gonna do holes one, two, three, and four. It appears we're actually doing holes one, and then we're gonna do hole eight, seven, and six it appears is what we're going to do so i just wrote those on the plate so we're going to go in the order of one eight seven six it's going to make the most sense so let's go to hole number eight and that should get us where we need to be all right we got that lined up let's go take a look at our plate all right got a little bit of wobble out of there on the plate so i just went ahead and added a couple clamps Go down to number seven. Just gonna go straight across the top. Number six. All right, let's get our half inch drill bit in here. We'll punch this hole through and then we'll work our way around and get the other three knocked out. And I'm gonna have to come off the end of the plate to get this in place. So that was six. Now we're going to jump up to seven and just work our way back around. And that's it, we've got our half a bolt hole circle drilled. We know where the center is, we've got our bottom of our plate down here. So now I'm just gonna kinda sketch a circle, sketch an arc on here, and we'll take this over to the torch. We'll do an arc on the top half, and then maybe just kinda come down a little bit on an angle on the bottom to sort of match up with what was on there. And we'll get the torch out and we'll cut that off, clean up the edge a little bit, and we'll be ready to go and weld our little tab back on here for the lock mechanism, and we'll get our bolts, we'll push those through from the back side, we'll tack them on the back, and be able to drop the lug nuts on from the front. Let's go ahead and get this marked up and get it torched. I probably could have found a five gallon pail or something else with a big enough arc to draw on there, but the old string method seemed to be close enough for this project, so just knocked it out real quick that way.
Again, nothing too fancy here. Just marked it slightly wider than the base we're going to attach it to. Made some straight lines up the edge for a little bit of shape, and we'll get to cutting. Now for straight cuts, nice to have a straight edge to work from, so just clamp this piece of angle iron on there and we'll cut right down the edge of that to get our straight lines. I think that's gonna work. I haven't used a cutting torch in a long time, so I'm happy with that. We'll hit that on the belt grinder, put a coarse belt on there. We'll clean that edge up and we'll have that looking in great shape in no time. And then we'll do our test fit, make sure we're good. And shoot, man, we're just about ready to weld the tab on. Should have those bolts coming. Tack those from the backside and we'll be ready to mount that on the trailer. We're getting there. We'll let that cool down and then we'll hit it on the belt grinder. All right, we got this torched out. Not a terrible looking edge. But we'll just put this on a 36 grit belt and we should be able to clean that up here without too much trouble.
making pretty short work of it. Well, there we go. That was just a couple minutes. Cleaned up that torched edge all the way around. And we've got a nice looking finished part. Roughed it out with that 36 grit belt. Just touched it with the 125, 120 at the end, just to make sure it's not too rough. And I say we got a good looking finished part there. Let's go test our whole fit, and then we'll be ready to get this thing welded back together. Okay, so that's how we're looking on there. No problem getting our four bolts in. So we've got no problem on our alignment. We've got plenty of room for this to fit over top. We've got clearance down here. This is what I'll line up on the existing plate to make sure that I get that where we want it. We'll eyeball it nice and kind of square and set up on there. Clamp that onto the existing plate and then we'll be able to weld right across here and we'll be able to just weld around that existing plate on those three sides to make sure that it's solidly held in place. Practice my vertical uphill welds on both sides here and then a nice weld across the top. So I'd say we're in good shape. Before we do that, we're gonna drop the four bolts in, get those tightened with the lug nuts. We'll pack the four proper bolts. We'll pack those from the back side so that they're not gonna spin when you're trying to tighten it. And then we'll flip it over. We'll put that lock mechanism. We'll get that lined up, get our tab welded onto the front of this. So we got a couple pieces to weld onto this before we get this welded back onto the trailer. Looking good. All right, so we got the four bolts in there. That is fitting like it's supposed to. Our lug nuts on this side, we'll tighten those up a little bit. Pack the back. All right, I think that's eyeballed on there, looks good. Make sure I get a clamp up on the top and get it pulled up tight to that other plate. All right, welding 3 8 plate is pretty much the max for my little Lincoln welder, especially on that uh, vertical uphill welding, going through lots of wire, but overall I think it uh, worked pretty well. Definitely did the job.
All right, well, I know my welding, my vertical welding, isn't gonna win any beauty contest, but pretty good on that second side. A little lumpy bumpy on the first side, but that was a bottom up weld. I know we got a ton of penetration. Went in the back side of those slots a little bit, tacked it in there, so there is no way that thing is coming off of there. So there's what we look like from the back. Let's go check it out from the front, get this tire put back on here. All right, well, that's what it looks like from the front. Get a little bit of paint on that, and I think that looks pretty custom, pretty factory looking. So we'll let that cool down for a little bit and we'll get that tire put back on there. All right, well, here is the moment of truth. Does the cabinet open and latch? Honestly, it was a little tighter than I thought it was going to be. I didn't account for the extra 3 eighths of an inch of plate, having that tire stick out a little bit. So it could have gone up just a little bit higher, but ultimately it does latch. And uh, the tire kind of hanging down on the bottom of those lug nuts. So move that, it's going to go up another eighth of an inch. And uh, it does end up fitting in there pretty well. So we minimized how high we have to move it and definitely got it so that the cabinet works and it opens up, operates the way that it's supposed to. Successful job, customer is happy. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another project here in the Blades to Be shop. The trailer's gone, customer is gone, but hey, the project is done, customer is happy with it. So all in all, turned out well. Hope you enjoyed watching a little welding, a little bit of fabrication, a little bolt hole circle drilling on a mill. Got to do some things we don't do as often here in the Blades to Be shop. Got the cutting torch out, practice some vertical welding. So for me, good project, some good experience, some good practice all around. Hey, as always, shout out to my subscribers on the channel. Sure appreciate you coming back watching these videos. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, explore some of the other videos. If you like what you see, great time to hit the subscribe button on the channel. Drop a like, drop a comment on here. Would love to hear from you, hear what you think about these videos. Till next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. Hey, I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on something. Not exactly sure yet. Probably back to uh, finishing up one of those Pearson Pro pallets and getting back to making some knives in a uh, little more production type process. So that's what's coming up next. Until then, y'all take care.